You just hit a squad car. I know, I know. It's okay. I know the guy. He's a jerk. <laughs> Welcome back to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, a weekly podcast where movie enthusiasts, ex movie theater projectionists, new and old friends take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question should or shouldn't you watch this? I want to extend. Uh, I don't even have a. I don't have a, a quip for you. I'm sorry, but my reoccurring guest. <laughs> no drug addict. No, no. Yeah, you're not uh, uh, in uh, rehab. I should call you rehab sack lunch <laughs> from all the cocaine you Little dime bag daddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dime bag daddy is sick. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Axel Foley is back where he doesn't belong. Hang on. Axel Foley is back. I'm going deep, 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 deep undercover. Back where he doesn't belong. So how long would it take to shave those legs anyway? I suppose you're trying to be charming. Actually, I'm just offering my grooming services. Who the hell are you? Uh, my name is Johnny Wish Wishbone. Johnny Wishbone, and I'm a psychic from the island of Saint Croix. I'm a psychic phenomenon. Watch this. I don't know who you are, but watch this. Um, your name is um Lux, right? Chief Lux. That's your name. See, the name pop inside my head like that. And your name is um um. Biddle, yes, see? And you give two more seconds, I would say to myself, I don't need no help from no one because I'm Johnny Wishbone, psychic extraordinaire. If you need me, just think Johnny Wishbone and I come running. Lots and Biddle. It's like kibbles and bits, but different. See Eddie Murphy in the smash hit sequel, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Oh, man, dude. Don't you wish you knew what was ad-libbed and, like, to just watch him come up with this stuff whether that's ad-libbed or not just the way that he comes up with it don't you wish you could watch that creative process yeah i mean this is kind of not funny or crazy or anything it's just like in my life i love watching eddie murphy you know michael jordan you know, Yo-Yo Ma, like people who are, are the best at their game and just being, yeah. just witnessing them do their craft makes me just want to be better at stuff in my life. And it's just so fun 100%. to see him cook, man. It's awesome. Agreed. But yeah, that's, that's where I'm at with like seeing the improv, whether it is or it isn't, he delivers it as if it were just coming off the cuff. I'm sure a lot of it is. A million percent. All right, you want to jump right into popcorn trivia? Let me tell you something, Pandeo. I want to extend a, an apology. Uh, I'm sorry, this isn't coming from a place of Will Smith, but I want to extend an apology to Chris Rock and his family. Okay? I know you're listening. I'm sorry I forgot you and the uh, the build, top build stars. Okay? I know... Sack lunch yeah. brought you up, and I'm glad he did. But here's a here's a tr- trivia point about Chris Rock and his appearance in a way of an apology. Okay. Okay. Chris Rock makes an appearance as the valet at the Playboy Mansion who complains about Axel bringing in a cement truck. This is his first role on the big screen, and I did not know that. Really? Yeah, this is his debut, just like Damon Wayans. Okay. So there you go. Thank you, Chris Rock. That's pretty awesome. Which. By the way, speaking of Buddy Cop, he shows up in Lethal Weapon. Yes, that's right. I need to rewatch the Lethal Weapon series. Oh, they're so good. They're so good. I watched with my wife. They had a Lethal Weapon TV show, and it was... With Damon Wayans. (laughs) it, It was awesome. Really? Yeah, and they had two seasons with the two main characters, Murtaugh and... um Riggs. Riggs, that's right, Merton Riggs. I guess Riggs, the Mel Gibson replacement, was like an a hole, made it very an un, unsafe working experience, and so they fired him. And they brought in the guy that we like. He's the guy that shoots Will Ferrell in the neck on Old School. <laughs> I just forgot his name. Oh yeah, he he replaces Merton or Riggs, the character. 
And there was only one season after that. So it was three seasons and then it got canceled, but it was great. It's Stifler. That's the only, that's the only, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Stifler. But what's his actual name? Sean William Scott. Sean Williams. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. There you go. All right. I only have two other trivia points, but these are awesome. So this is, <laughs> this is a surprise me so much. Just before the final gun battle, Rosewood is seen pulling out guns from an arsenal in his trunk, which is amazing. This is a nod to co-producer Don Simpson. According to Judge Reinhold, in the making of documentary for the first film, he recalls that the first time he met Simpson, the producer showed off his collection of guns in the trunk of his car. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's like, hey, you want to come? Want to come check something out? What, what like, <laughs> like right now? Yeah, yeah, just right like, over here in well, my car. You got a bunch of M80s or what? <laughs> and click, check this out. Oh my gosh, is that a is that a bazooka? <laughs> like, you know, it's like what what are you doing, dude? <laughs> oh, different times for sure. Yeah, and he's probably got like a a key of cocaine also right next to all the guns. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely different time. Yeah, yeah. Mid Coke pre AIDS is a, is a cra- <laughs> crazy pre-aids. time. Yeah, crazy time. <laughs> All right, last trivia point. Billy Rosewood has posters in his apartment of Rambo First Blood Part 2 and Cobra, both starring Stallone. Stallone's then wife, Bridget Nielsen, appears in the film as Carla Fry. And Stallone was the original choice to play the lead in that original Beverly Hills Cop. And if you haven't listened, please go listen to Beverly Hills Cop 1, our review, because it's great and it has more information about that. But in fact, when Stallone was signed to star in Beverly Hills Cop, he did a polish on the script that focused more on action and took away the comedic element. He changed the main mm. character's name from Axel Foley to Axel Cabretti when he actually, <laughs> when he a- eventually dropped out, he used the character's name and certain elements from his polish of the script for Cobra that came out in 1986. I will say that for for listeners, the biggest reason that, that you should be listening every single week and you should be sharing this like crazy is this was more enjoyable because of some of the trivia from uh, Beverly Hills Cop 1. Like when I saw those posters, I immediately thought, oh my gosh, how, how cool. They're throwing an ode to, yeah. to good old Sly Stone. Yeah. So I, I love that. I, I think that it's a testament to, to how enjoyable this is. What oh, you do. Thank you. Yeah. And, and it's just, this is what I want. Like I love when I'm watching movies where I can say, you know, I'd be like, dude, that guy, he was in this, or he had, he right. tripped right here and they just left it in, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's fun to know about. It makes it more enjoyable. Like you said. Absolutely. It really does. So good job. Thank you. All right. Let's get into beefs. Okay. Where's the beef? Hey, where's the beef? All right. I've got mm, five beefs. Okay. Going big beefs, huh? Tony Scott and Bridget Nielsen had an affair during the film. I mean, okay. my Hollywood. Be- my beef is Tony. That's Sly. The Sly's lady. Can you not taint the the guts? Taint the water. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> but you're right. Like it's uh, not a surprise. It's just a beef. There's two non surprises there. Number one, it's Hollywood. Number two, it's Bridget Nielsen. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody in Hollywood she hasn't slept with. She's probably fucked Mel Smith. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> now that we know who uh, Mel Smith is. Yeah. Every time I say that, I'm thinking it's a mix up of Mel Gibson and Will Smith. <laughs> yeah. But if you look at the guy, it ain't. <laughs> no, it's not. He's He looks like a an under under the bridge dweller. Yeah, absolutely. Which makes it even funnier that she probably has fucked him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, I don't know what was, was going through my mind. It must've been really late, but I'm just going to read this next beef and I'm going to try to figure out why okay. I put it in here. Okay. <laughs> when Axel picks up Ro- Rosewood's turtle, remember that when they're in his apartment? Oh yeah. The conversation turns to where the turtles male sexual organ it, 
is located. Certainly not on that turtle, which is female. Female turtles have flat undersides. Male turtles have concave undersides that facilitate mounting the female under <laughs> undershell when copulating. So maybe, maybe my beef is that they just didn't get a, a male turtle. I don't know. That's really dumb. I wish I had like a, a really, let's see. There we, there we go. <laughs> I will tell you a funny story about that's related. I, I took my nephew to the zoo once, and he had to have been probably four years old. And just so happens that the turtles were outside and, and the presentation of the mounting was taking place. Oh, no. And, and he says, oh, look, they're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Which I just think is so funny, man. That's funny. <laughs> uh, All right, next beef. Bridget Nielsen appears in the scene at the Playboy Mansion. She was the centerfold in Playboy magazine in December 1987. Again, I don't know why why I have a beef with that. I, I don't yeah, know. what is your beef with that? If you've ever seen it, it's. I mean, I've heard that yeah. it's tasteful. <laughs> Friend, <laughs> friends have told you that it's very tasteful. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know why that's a beef, but uh, more power yeah. to you, Bridget. My apologies. Next one. One of the plot ideas for this film during its inception involved Axel Foley teaming up with detectives to solve a case overseas for Scotland Yard. See, that's a beef for me because it's in the title. You have to have this in Beverly Hills. You can't take him over to Scotland. But what if you took him over to Scotland and you made some like random super small town? called Beverly Hills. I mean, that would be pretty funny. <laughs> it would be incredible. Yeah. But instead, we got Beverly Hills Cop 3, which, again, by all accounts, sounds like it might have fallen short. So maybe we they should have went over to Scotland. It's a small beef, but I I don't know if it would, that would have worked for me. Yeah, it would have been tough. Quite a quite a big stretch for, for just a, a, a small joke, you know, where he sees the sign and he's like, oh, man. This is Beverly Hills, too. <laughs> yeah. I got, yeah. I don't, exactly. I don't know. All right. Last beef. Bronson Panchot was slated to reprise his role as Serge from the first film, but he was busy with his sitcom Perfect Strangers. Okay. Well, this is my, yeah, my This is my biggest beef of the entire movie. I'm, my beef is with the producers of Perfect Strangers for not letting him go do yeah. two days of filming. Number two, my beef beef is with the producers of this movie for not fighting harder to get Being him in the movie. Them. Yeah. Correct. Yep. And a small a small salted beef for Bronson for not doing whatever he needed to do to get into this movie cuz I need you. Agreed. That's good beef. Yeah. Cuz his character's off. Awesome. Correct. Any other beefs that I missed? I'm going to re-beef from from part 1. There wasn't enough F words. Correct. And I would probably say I there wasn't enough Eddie Murphy dialogue. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Some some like monologues where he's just talking. Well, and I don't even necessarily, but like his his snappy comebacks to people where he he just trashes them without you even realizing it. Like I, I don't feel like he did that much. Yeah, you're right. That is that's a great beef. Because he was so just off the cuff funny talking shit to everybody in in one. And I just I thought it made the movie. Well, I guess I mean So I think that's my other beef. It's kinda hard to do that when he, he, there's a there is a really good, great camaraderie with him and Taggart and uh Rosewood, which I mean if you're you're not going to talk crap on him all the time because you're buddies now, you know? But he, he still does a little bit, but not nearly as much as the first one. Yeah. That's a good beef. So, there you go. All right, you ready to move to puzzles? Let's do it. A sphincter says what? What? A sphincter says what? What? Exactly. <laughs> all right, in true popcorn puzzle fashion these are mixed in with a little bit of trivia there's a couple of crazy things that i've never heard of in my whole life when it comes to like movie trivia but 
Here's one of them. And it's kind of obscure, but it's still interesting to me. The license plate that you see on the one of the cars, it's and I noticed it. I was like, that's a weird license plate number. It's two G A T one two three. And I looked at it and I was like, that's gotta be like a reference to something or to someone or someone in the production or whatever. But as it turns out, it appears in LA Story in nineteen ninety one. It appears in a movie called Go from nineteen ninety nine. Pay It Forward in 2000, Traffic in 2000, Crazy Beautiful in 2001, Mulholland Drive in 2000, SWAT in 2003, and Two and a Half Men from 2003 as well. I looked it up. Really? It's the California standard fictional license plate, kind of similar to like when they do a phone number and it's like 555, then then the number. It's just like, I guess, a fake license plate that they use in movies. But I didn't know that. It's weird. Okay. Puzzle. That's interesting. A puzzle solved that I didn't even know needed to be solved. I bet you it's probably even more movies. Than oh, that. probably. Yeah, way more. All right, my next puzzle. This was the first movie to be filmed at the Playboy Mansion. Really? That this is it. This is the no. first one. No way. I mean, if it but, is, but Heff was sure lucid. Oh yeah, that was a huh. great scene. By okay. the way, when they rolled up, I was like, "Thank you." Welcome. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, it, I, it wasn't exactly what I expected at the Playboy Mansion, but... Well, um, it was still fun. Isn't it weird? Yeah. Like, you know, we've talked about it multiple times about, like, 80s chicks, but her bodies were different in the 80s. It was, it was different. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't... I, I, I'm not... I'm not a licensed man to talk about D- this dietitian <laughs> but, sure. <laughs> i'm not saying that women are f- like fatter or, or not fat or what or dip you know i'm just saying like they're different there were some hard bodies back in the 80s it was like a different time like i don't know it's different hard bodies man i'm telling you hard bodies everywhere but i mean look I, I think everybody can admit that as time progresses the access has made us all a little loose yeah, but still, it was it's distinct, is all I'm saying. It's it, 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 you're absolutely right though. Like it, uh, in this movie, because last week I mentioned about the montage of you know mm-hmm. the '80s hotties yeah. running around Beverly Hills. Yeah, like it, I did notice that there was a lot of hard body, and I remember thinking, like, damn, like you got to do crazy stuff to get that now. Yeah, yeah, very unique to the time. Good puzzle. That's all I'm saying. All right, my last puzzle, and if, let me know if you have any more, but this one was very like, whoa, what? I did not think of this. One of the of a mini cycle of mid-late 1980s, Beverly Hills titled Hollywood movies that were made after the box office success of the first film. Listen to this. <laughs> it's a, This is wild. So Beverly Hills Cop 2 obviously has Beverly Hills in it. But then you have Troop Beverly Hills in 1989, Beverly Hills Vamp from 1989, Beverly Hills Bratz from 1989, Beverly Hills Madam 1986, Down and Out in Beverly Hills 1986, Scenes from the Class Struggle in Beverly Hills 1989, and soon would also be in the 1990s, Beverly Hills Cop 3 and The Taking of Beverly Hills in 1991. That's how much influence this yeah. movie had on, on we're, well, let's just put that in our name and we'll get extra people to go see it. But Beverly Hills itself was exploding on the scene in the 80s. You know, like it was a destination for star seekers and you wanted to be seen in Beverly Hills, you don't really hear about Beverly Hills anymore. But like you did in the eighties and nineties, it was yeah. Rodeo Drive. It was, you're right. It was a foreign country. Beverly Hills was back. Yeah. Then. Like high, 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 the highest end of shopping. High, the highest end that you wouldn't find anywhere else in the U S and that made it so unique. Yeah. Very, and very concentrated in like one little section. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I mean that, yeah. Not a surprise. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have put it in puzzles. You always bring it around, and I appreciate that. That's why you're on the show. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> and any other puzzles that you you had? No, I I don't think so. All right, let's get into redemption and our rating. 
the most anticipated okay. rating of the series. I have no idea where you're going on this. Normally, I have a good good inkling, but I have no idea where you're going to go. Okay, that's good. It's gonna... in fact, I'm not even certain I know where I'm going quite yet. Yeah, I think I'm. I think that's where I would have put you right now. Is I think you're still on the fence. I am on the fence. Yeah. All right, let's get into popcorn redemption. I have exercised the demons. As you all know, Popcorn Redemption is created because of a turd movie that we reviewed a long time ago, and we had a lot of bad things to say in it, and I hate going out on a low note, so that's why we have Popcorn Redemption. What was Redemption. the movie? It was uh, Macbeth okay. with Michael Fassbender. It was hot trash, dude. I'm sure it was. Yeah. But Fassbender's great. But, Fassbender but yeah, is great. I... Hot garbage movie. This is terrible. Yeah. It's an old, old review, way early in my catalog of reviews, so don't judge, but go and uh, go and uh, take a listen. Find out why we have yeah. Popcorn Redemption. All right, I have three that I just love. Tony Scott wanted Hans Zimmer to score, but Paramount instead insisted on having Harold Faltermeyer return. And man, I'm so glad that they did. Wait, wait who's this? The guy who did the Axel F theme song. They so oh, so Scott yeah. wanted Hans Zimmer probably to do a more traditional score. And Paramount's like, no, we gotta get Harold back. He's so good. And they made yeah. not very often do the suits and the executive make good decisions. In this case, it was very good. Agreed. Despite a long and storied music career, the song Shakedown is Bob Seger's only number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Glenn Frey was slated to record the song, but had to pull out at the last minute when he lost his voice. He recruited his friend Seger as a replacement. Glenn Frey sang The Heat Is On, featured in Beverly Hills Cop, the first one. That's awesome. It really is. What a crazy story. Like that's seren- serendipity at it. At its peak. Yeah, dude, the Shakedown song is so awesome. The Heat Is On is so awesome. The Axel F theme, so awesome. Yep. It really made this movie, I'm, I'm glad they kept it. And again, going back to the reviews of last week, that guy is saying like, hey, it has the same stuff from the other one that we all liked. Why are you hating on that? That's so good. And I agree. Yep. The last redemption for me, when Todd catches Jeffrey sneaking around his office. <laughs> That's uh, uh, Paul Reiser's character. Jeffrey pretends he's lost and remarks, this is not my office, <laughs> before scurrying off. This is a throwback to the first film where Todd berates him for eavesdropping on a conversation he's having with Alex by the locker, at which point Jeffrey remarks, this is not my locker, <laughs> before scurrying <laughs> off. See, those, those little vignettes, dude, are what make movies like this special to me. Yeah. Where they Agreed. they know that the they had a joke and they want to do it in another way that's very similar but hits the same way and that just makes me smile. I agree. I love it. Yeah. Any redemption you have before we get to our rating? I think this is is one of those movies where you're going to be entertained you're you're not going to lose. No matter where our ratings shake out. Like it was a watchable movie that you're going to be entertained. You're going to find funny moments in it. And I, I think that it still brought some originality, quintessential eighties, quintessential buddy cop movie. I think that, that the redemption is, is just in the watchability of it. Yeah. It's, it's like, you know, going to the rest. I am sorry. We're talking about ordering food again. Maybe it's cause I haven't had breakfast, but. We're recording this in the morning. Well, f- morning for me, afternoon for you, because you're in Brasil. Correct. But Brasil. it's like going to a restaurant that you like going to and just ordering the same thing. Cause you know you're gonna you know what you're getting and it's you know it's gonna be dope and awesome. I, I yeah. like that. It's familiar. It's like that's why you go back to movies that you really like. Sometimes for nostalgia reasons, sometimes because you just, you use it almost as therapy, dude. Like there's times where I watch Goonies 
because it's like my all-time favorite movie. Shameless plug, go listen to our 200th episode uh, with Dr. Dare. It's a sick pod about Goonies. It like centers me, dude. Is that weird? No, I, I think that sometimes you need that reset. Sometimes you need that connection to where you were at that particular moment, because that's what shaped you to, to the point where you are now. And so I think that it's it's not even like a form of, of, of therapy, but I think it's also a necessity. Because yeah. we get, like, we're so fucking busy these days <laughs> that, that I, I, which is wild to me. I don't know how, I don't know why, but you know, the, the, the times used to be much simpler and much easier. And I think that it is good to connect to those moments. I know it's very, you know, every generation says that, you know, you know, my parents say it about the fifties and sixties, you know, simpler times, every, you know, we didn't lock our doors and all this other stuff. But when we say it, they really were simpler times. Now it's like, Oh yeah. Way. Our, earth is is in a different state dude <laughs> i like a, it, it, the, the speed by which everything happens now is insane and you know we have plans of purchasing a large swath of land and later on this year and and for for us the goal is to to slow down and to 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 get back that connect to to earth so i mean that's that's absolutely a goal of of the families yeah i mean anyway i don't know how we got here but i i'm glad we did because this was a really good absolutely. conversation um yeah all right are you ready for do you want any more redemption or are you ready for the rating i'm ready all right do you want me to go first yeah you go first all right what? Yeah. Yeah. So here, let me explain it. Okay. I know that's obviously surprising to you by the reaction that you just gave, wow. but yeah, here's, here's the reasons why I put this at a golden bucket. The first move was so great. And we, you know, we talked about it already, but it's the reason why this is so much better to me. I watched this twice. Okay. And not because I was like, oh, I need, I fell asleep or I had to like, you know, rem I forgot something because we hadn't recorded for, for a couple weeks. I, I like it so much. I love Tony Scott. I love how he frames stuff. I love the sunsets. I love the big sweeping shots. I love what he did with the movie. I love the fact that, that Rosewood and Taggart are back and they're funnier than ever and they're they're working together and they're, they're like breaking the rules on purpose and they know what they're doing. It's that's, that's so awesome to me. And, uh, yeah. and again, we've kind of alluded to the fact that there's no, it's no surprise that after Beverly Hills cop three, we haven't had one until 2024. Okay. It didn't do well and we're going to find out why, but if I'm comparing, if I'm putting these three movies on a pedestal, two is, the best for me. So I have to give it a golden bucket if I gave the first one a large. So that's why. All right. I, I'm going to go large bucket. This one was, was hard for me. I actually wanted to go medium with, with extra butter, mm. but I think, I think that at the end of the day, it, it didn't give me more or less than the first one and, and I gave the first one a, a large bucket. Yeah. So I do feel like the first one was better because I'm such an Eddie Murphy comedy fan. Yeah, I I, I would, would say this one's a large bucket for me just because of that that fact that it didn't give me more, but it also I don't feel like it gave me any less. So I yeah, love so yeah, I love large that. bucket. Yeah, I love that man. That's a perfect and I was kind of thinking you would be right there. Medium medium to large it's for sure it's this is, a, this is a great movie yeah i'm stressed about three i'm not gonna lie to you i'm, I'm really worried about yeah it. and they're i mean we'll get into it obviously when we do this but yeah they missed the mark on a bunch of things so we'll find out why okay. yeah yeah but right. i i did watch the teaser trailer for axel f which i normally stuff like this i 
there's certain times where I want to see everything I can and read everything I can about a movie. And sometimes I just avoid it at all costs. And this one wasn't the one I wanted to avoid. But when I saw the trailer pop up in my YouTube feed, I was like, F it. Axel F it. I'm watching this, dude. <laughs> and the teaser is so sick, man. I just, I, I hope that, you know how trailers, like you watch a trailer and it's so dope and then the movie sucks. I hope it's not like that. <laughs> I hope it's the opposite. Well, of that. for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. So I, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Any parting thoughts? No, I think just go out and watch the damn thing. Yeah. It's on Netflix. It's easy to consume right now. And who knows when Absolutely. it'll be gone, you know? <laughs> So True. get it while it's easy to get. And quite frankly, I've just been buying physical media because it's just not very accessible. And a spoiler for my son's birthday, it's his birthday this weekend. And he and I love Jurassic Park. And we just, every time we're like, oh, let's watch Jurassic Park again. And he's like, yes, dad, let's do it. And then I go to like Peacock and it's gone or I go to Netflix and it's gone or I go, you know, it's like, yeah, where could, where do I find it now? You know? So I bought him all five movies on 4k and like, we'll just have them whenever we want. We just watch them all the time. And that's sick. That's to me. a good point. Yeah, that's smart. So I might do that with Beverly Hills Cop. sometimes with series when I'm like, oh, I need to have these added to my library. There's a new one coming out and I'm like, I should just wait and buy them all together. You know, so yeah, I might wait, but who knows that does Netflix release their movies on Blu-ray 4k? I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one. I'll have to, I'll have to look that up, but anyway, yeah, there's, there's another homework for you. There we go. Well, that's it for this week, but I'm with you always look for me in the cloud at popcorn priest. I love movies and would love it if you'd share the love. Share this with the movie lover in your life. Actually, you know what I'm doing? I got to do this. I can't. I'm already screwed with my monetization. I might as well just. <laughs> you better just, just let it all out. Yeah, first, first we got to do this one. Because <laughs> it's just so great. <laughs> I, just, I, I can't even read my outro because I've listened to this. <laughs> you, you've got to find the Peter Griffin one for, for Beverly Hills Cop 3. All right. Let me let me take some notes here. All right. Back to, back to the outro. <laughs> Another way mm. to support the show is by donating, donating to the show by visiting patreon.com forward slash popcorn priests and see what extra perks you can enjoy. If you made it this far, go give us a five-star review on Spotify and Apple Podcast. As always, thanks for listening, and a very special thanks to my reoccurring guest and one of the few people I would want as my cop partner, Detective Sacklunch. Yeah, buddy. Well, just like with Mission Impossible, I appreciate you pushing me and, and taking me along and, and the listeners along for the, the journey of Beverly Hills Cop series. Yeah, dude, I think it's a every time I know I rag on you all the time, but it makes for a really good experience when you get to share something cool with someone that that you're really like best friends with. And for sure. and that's always dope. So thanks for not watching it and now watching it. Yeah. <laughs> the journey is fun, though, man. And with that, remember, when you watch movies, you can pop off, you can pop in or pop out. But always bring the popcorn. <laughs>